Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Oliver Smith Watches. My name is George Reed. I'm the fine timepiece director here at Oliver Smith Jeweler. To my left is Elizabeth Smith, and today we're going to tell you a little bit about the most significant dive watch in history, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. So Blancpain was established in 1735 by Jehan Jacques Blancpain, and it's kind of universally considered the world's oldest watch company. Now, Vacheron Constantin would like to differ with that. They were established about a decade later. The difference is they've been continuously open the whole time. Mm -hmm. Blancpain's kind of stopped and started a few times, but uh, in the 50s, they came up with by far their most historically significant watch, the 50 Fathoms. And... Um, Biz, tell us more. Yeah, there's a little bit of story behind that. So the Blanc Pond's owned by the family for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. 1932, the business is taken over by Betty Fischer. And fun fact, she's the first female CEO ever of a watch company. And I just found that out today, so I think that's absolutely yeah, awesome. I yeah, I love that. Yeah, su super cool. So she brings her nephew into the fold, Jean-Jacques. Which, another Jean-Jacques. It's always it's a popular name over there, I popular guess. Popular name, for sure. So they had a home on the French Riviera and where he would like to spend a lot of time and also really got into diving. Now, diving's a new sport, very kind of like rudimental, mm -hmm. right? So he's doing a dive one day and he loses track of time. And he actually it's gotta be terrifying. I can't right? yeah. and runs out of oxygen. So he sort of makes an emergency ascent, um, really risky, risked his life, but made it okay. And that gave him this epiphany moment of I need to make a watch where we can tell time underwater while diving. So a couple things you need on a watch to make it a dive watch. First and probably most importantly is it has to be waterproof. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And um, it, it's it's funny. It seems so obvious now, but it's incredibly hard back then. Yeah. Um, it, even just the gasketing systems hadn't been invented yet, and and to that point. Um, Blanc Pond was the first watch to do a, a double O-ring on their crown, uh, thus getting it water resistant. Um, nobody, nobody had ever done that before, mm -hmm. and uh, and because of that, they actually uh, that was their first patent. Yeah, and they held that patent for a long time. Right? Yeah. Yep. Um, also, so we've got a waterproof watch, and now it needs to be able to tell track time underwater. A chronograph wouldn't work because it had to be waterproof. Yeah, and the minute you hit the chronograph, it's like a sieve. You're just you're letting water in, in, in into the into the watch. And it wasn't until quite recently they do have underwater chronographs now, but uh, that right. technology did not exist in the 50s for sure. So Jean Jacques and team came up with the idea of this rotating bezel, this ring, yep. where you could set it for when you're going underwater, and then be able to track the time, see how long you've been under there. They also made it so that you had to really push in the bezel to set it so you couldn't accidentally knock it underwater. Yeah, huge huge time. safety feature. Yeah. yeah, so if you do knock your bezel, you can only take time off the dive, not add time to it and, mm -hmm. and, and be down there too long. Yeah, it could be incredibly dangerous. Really smart. And then third thing also maybe seems obvious now, but you had to be able to read it underwater. Yeah. So you needed some luminescence there, um, which was added to the numerals on the dial. Yeah, I, I think the goal there was legibility in murky waters, in, in, in dark situations. And so, sure. um, so yeah, the, the, the luminescence was incredibly important. So all of that came together to be the 50 fathoms that we know today. Um, the name specifically means something related to diving. Yeah, uh, fathom is a British term of depth, um, and 50 fathoms roughly equates to 91 meters or around 300 feet, which is um, now universally recognized as the depth necessary to be an ISO certified dive watch. Mm -hmm. But um, really, even today, uh, 300 feet down is significant. Um, it's a scary depth. Anything over 100 feet is like real. Um, As we always say, so, that something, should be plenty. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so, something goes wrong there, and you're in trouble. So, um, universally now, like like 300 meters is kind of what what we uh, what we call a dive watch. So the modern 50 Fathoms uh, is a wonderful homage to the original. Um, it has an awful lot of the same design cues, um, absolutely ISO certified. I mean, it's still a very, very serious dive watch, but maybe a little bit more, more uh, refined now. Um, 45 millimeters, so you have this, um, it's a big watch. Uh, you have great legibility from across the room. You can read it. Um, one thing I really love about the 50 Fathoms is the bezel. Um, it is a unidirectional dive bezel, which is actually um, their second patent. And um, ironically, uh, Rolex couldn't even use a unidirectional bezel on the Submariner until 1980 because that's when the patent ran out for Blanc Pond. But on this particular watch, uh, it's a sapphire bezel. 
And and it's 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 so it's so interesting now because so many of the watch brands have um, ceramics and liquid metals and all this yeah. kind of stuff. But really early when this watch first started to hit, um, sapphire was still one of the strongest materials you could have. I mean, it's a nine on on Mohs uh, scale of hardness for naturally occurring substances, and uh, the back of it actually has the luminescence on it, and they press it in. So when you're in a low light situation, um, you get this great depth into the watch. It's absolutely stunning. Um, in the titanium versions, you actually have an exhibition back as well which is super cool. I um, actually get to see the movement, but um, still a very, very serious dive watch. Uh, little aside, it's also the last watch in series that has the word Blanc Pan inscribed on the side. Oh, okay. Um, it's, a, it's a little nod to the founder, Jehan Jacques. Uh, he was the first guy to kind of sign his work. Um, back in the day, uh, the guy who made your watch was a craftsman, not an artisan. And Jean Jacques thought his work was, um, uh, it had transcended uh, the cast and he signed it. And it was made an uproar. And then I think it was the King of Spain um, said, yeah, no, you're, you know what, your stuff is artful. So, um, so they actually changed. It's good. So different than now, today, the world we live in. It's like all brands. Oh, yeah, logo. yeah. It, so it's, it's all art. Talk a little bit about, I love the stories you've shared when someone comes in and they see the 50 Fathoms and they're like, that looks like a Rolex America. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so it's, it's funny because this was, this was Genesis for dive watches and, um, Rolex, even in print has kind of said, yeah. Um, and we, we took a lot of ideas from, from the 50 Fathoms. Um, what Rolex does really, really well is more marketing to the point now where you could look at a Seiko dive watch and people go, oh, that looks like a Submariner. What a Submariner looks like is all of those things that make a watch an ISO certified dive watch. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually a dark field. You have a certain level of illumination. You have a unidirectional dive bezel, a screw down crown, um, all of those things we've come to, to know and love in our dive watches. But um, it is it is funny that Rolex gets the credit for it. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's a great watch. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. Right, we're here too. to educate. Now, now you guys know some of the educated ones and you walk into a store. Well, and then moving forward, um, they've kind of done their modern version of the 50 Fathoms in the bathyscaphe. It's one I'm wearing now. And uh, and right here, uh, a little bit smaller, 43 millimeters, yep. um, which I really like. Uh, the 45 is spectacular, but it's not for every wrist. It's a big watch. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit more refined, a little bit more flat sided. They do have a ceramic bezel with, with liquid metal inserts. So um, kind of a nod to what everybody's doing now, but same depth rating, um, same luminescence, um, absolutely incredible automatic movement, um, just a wonderful modern dive watch and, and their take on what's going on now. This one too, the Bath Escape, I feel like can can be a dress watch. Oh, absolutely. Sure, if you want to pull absolutely. it off. I'm doing it with a suit right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love the look. Um, taking something that wouldn't normally be in that genre and adapting it, I think is, is really, really cool. Yeah, so if you're kind of into more sporty look, um, but you need your dress piece, so you want to change it up. Yeah, I mean, it's t-shirt and jeans up to a tuxedo. I mean, it, it, yeah. it really does kind of run the gamut for usage. So thanks for watching and learning more about the history of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them below and make sure to subscribe for more watch history like this. Thanks for watching.